Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Oh, everybody's having a great day. It is finally freaking Friday, and the Cowboys have gotten back to 500 and have put the New York stinking Giants back in the basement where they belong, back where they belong. And we can kick back and we can relax and we can watch this weekend, although we are a little bit beat up right now with, of course, Micah Parsons possibly out two to four weeks with the high ankle sprains and Demarcus Lawrence with the sprained foot possibly out several weeks as well. And on top of this, this is where last night you could definitely see say we had problems rushing the quarterback and that's not going to change this all started of course when we lost San Williams in in camp and you're probably wondering what is he doing with his hands well I I've got to whole I've got my new squeeze balls here um actually squeeze stars no balls and this one fits actually nicely between the fingers and see the Cowboys they stress you out and they literally make you drink so of course we have our Boom. Shot glasses because I'm stressed out by the Cowboys and I'm ready to drink. Be that as it may, shout out to channel members. If you become a channel member, that's yours as well. Um, and uh, tailgate members will be sending these out uh, as soon as Michael gets back uh, from seeing Gina this weekend. Be that as it may, we have a problem with rushing the quarterback. The trade deadline is um, November 5th. And this is a crazy idea. Now, now just, just hold up for a second here. Hold up here. This might be an idea that could help the Cowboys and hurt the Eagles in the same breath. You could say that the Eagles um, have a problem, the same problem we do, and that's getting after the quarterback after they got rid of Hassan Reddick. Now, here's the deal with Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick was traded to the New York Jets for, I believe, a third-round draft pick, in which case they were unable to come to an agreement on working out a deal, in which case Hassan Reddick has not reported to the Jets at all and is literally losing money every single week. And since this is week four, he still has not reported. Um, he's not going to report. And the problem for him is... He can stay out all season and not make a dime at all. But the Jets will still own his rights next year, and it'll be like this year didn't happen. He has hinted that he would be willing to get traded back to the Philadelphia Eagles, which would definitely help the Eagles. However, let's get crazy and think outside the box right now. The Cowboys have an instant need. Now, now this is what Hassan Reddick has been the last couple of years. Now, he's not, not a spring chicken by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he's about the same age as D-Law. What we're talking about here is um, last year, 11 sacks. The year before that, 16 sacks. The year before that, 11 sacks. And the year before that, 12 sacks. And that's between Arizona, Carolina, and the last two years in Philly. This could be one of those things that the Cowboys could do to get crazy. And I mean get crazy. A, you prevent the Eagles from getting better by going out and getting them. And B, you help to fill a need that is immediate. Now, we know one thing here. So knowing that um, Dalvin Cook has been signed, you know, four weeks ago, and he's not quite ready to play, that would probably mean that getting Hassan Reddick means that, you know, he wouldn't get plugged into play for at least, you know, week eight, nine, I guess, since he hasn't been to training camp or anything else, because that's what we do. That's what we do here with the Cowboys. But the Cowboys definitely have to look at this and say, um, we got to get some help if we are actually trying to be about something. And um, I don't know what the Jets. Now, here's, here's the problem with the Jets is the Jets may still be mad at us because of what happened when they tried to trade Jamal Adams with us. They wanted 
um, Zach Martin and a first round pick. And allegedly the Cowboys kind of let it be known that there was something going on on there and it kind of screwed the pooch on them trading Jamal Adams in which case they did not like the Dallas Cowboys too much after that, that they may not be willing and interested in trading with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, that's a whole other ball of wax. But he was originally traded them for a number three. And I would imagine that they wouldn't mind getting a number three back and saying, let's be just done with this. Or knowing, of course, the Cowboys that when they make deals that they don't get the same value, like Amari Cooper goes for a fifth round pick, you know, Devontae, uh, excuse me, not Devontae, A.J. Brown, get they get a number one in Tennessee that same year. So knowing that, the Cowboys would probably have to give up a number two pick. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't mind giving up a number two pick for Hassan Reddick. And here's why. You know how many number two picks of the Dallas Cowboys actually pan out? They don't really pan out. Now, we got hope with Marshawn Nealon. We got hope with Schoonmaker. But less than about 20% of our second-round picks end up becoming anything on our roster. Diggs, D-Law, that's the list. That's the list. End of story. So if you're saying it might take a number two pick, well, considering we spent a fourth-round pick to get Trey Lance, um, a guy that we can plug in and start playing now, might not be the worst thing. But clearly, this is one of those things that it's... um. Huh. we won't do anything. The Cowboys will be getting toaster leavings. They'll be scraping the bottom of the barrel. They'll be looking at the waiver wire of somebody who's been sitting out for the last four or five years, and that's what we'll do. And that's the difference um, of the Dallas Cowboys versus other teams. They'll go ahead and try and um, do bottom basement moves to fill in and just say, oh, we're okay, or we're shit. They're just going to stick with what we have here. And then we wonder why, come playoff time, we can't do better. But make no mistake about it, we got to do more as far as um, pass rushing than what we did last night. You know, fortunately, we're just playing against Daniel Jones, who isn't actually a great quarterback, but he's still got some decent numbers. All right, good people, as always, I appreciate you guys. And uh, tailgate members, you'll be looking out, look out for your star and your shot glass. And I'll see you soon. Peace.